Now let's take an in-depth look into the technical part of the North Korea's fifth nuclear test. Joining me live here in the studio is Seo Yeo, professor of nuclear engineering at Seoul National University. Professor Seo, uh, great to see you again. Thanks for having me. Let's first talk about the uh, scale of this nuclear test. Now we have officials confirming that they measured a roughly 5.04 magnitude artificial earthquake um, earlier on today, and uh, the destructive force of this explosion to be 10 to 12 kilotons. Now, of course, uh, some U.S. experts have put the number at 20 kilotons at most. How powerful is that? If it's 10 kilotons, that is equivalent to 10,000 tons of TNT. It's really powerful. It's more than enough to vaporize the people in the range of million and the buildings within one kilometer range. It's just instantly vaporized. And then maybe 10 minutes, the wind gust can take up the rest of it, maybe within the range of 10 kilometers. So it's a huge force, pretty much devastating. Right. Um, so I'm sure you've been following uh, the news and the latest coming out of North Korea and regarding the assessments of this nuclear explosion. In your view, how developed is North Korea's nuclear weapons technology capability? And of course, I cannot but uh, mention its delivery medium, which is the mm -hmm. most concerning. It's a million dollar question, by the way, because it's just too hard to answer because there's just not enough information, but based on the best knowledge, what I can tell you is that it's perhaps more developed than we've been thinking about. So it's pretty much serious, which means that they are probably able to produce miniature version of nuclear bombs within the range of possibly less than one ton and then less than one meter. That's a real present and clear danger to the Korean Peninsula. Uh, another very disturbing factor mm -hmm. is that North Korea claims to have successfully conducted an explosion test on nuclear materials capable of being mounted on a missile warhead. Of mm -hmm. course, that's what uh, the rest of the world is the most concerned about. And now, compared with the fourth test, which was conducted in January, mm -hmm. um, how is this test different from that? And what can we infer from what we know from the fifth nuclear test by North Korea this time? Actually, there are two things. A, the explosive power or the yield, quote unquote, is twice as much. At the least, it could be as much four times higher. That means they have really passed the nuclear exam by now. Last time, they were lacking something, maybe 2% deficient, lacking that this time almost close to 100%. So they passed the nuclear exam as far as they are concerned. Now. What about the explosion, the site itself? They are claiming that they've done this on the ground, probably not exactly literally on the ground, but possibly five meters, 10 meters, could be 500 meters, but close enough to the ground. That means we might be able to detect and actually collect all the gaseous diffusing materials like xenon, Krypton, that could be a clear sign like a smoking gun. We could detect the smoke at this time. Last time, we could not, but this time, we might be able to check on that smoke. Another very interesting thing that I've come to know mm -hmm. from uh, the North Korea state television is that they insisted that there is no leakage of radioactive materials and no radioactive emissions. Um, I really cannot uh, put an estimate of like why they have said that, but uh, apparently um, Korean Institute of Nuclear mm -hmm. Safety said they have embarked on a radiological measurement to see if they could in detect any xenon like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, what would that mean? Uh, uh, it's a pure rhetoric, literally speaking, because you just shot a gun and they're claiming that there's no smoke. Does it make a sense? I don't think so. So they're becoming pretty much political in saying that now we have totally contained the release of any radioactive materials. So come, but you are not going to get anything. So don't even think about coming. So. Actually, that's the message, but as far as I'm concerned, if that's been done on the ground or close to the ground, or even their yield was twice, even four times as much as before, then we should be able to detect something. Not just xenon, not just krypton, even um, cesium, 
strontium, you just name it, even plutonium, and even helium. So we can say by then, this was indeed actually pretty much boosted boom, actually, or maybe boosted even hydrogen bomb. So we can tell, but not right now, because currently we're lacking any data that we can basically uh, base our statement on. So it'll be another couple of days or weeks um, until we know that for sure. Exactly. And so it's literally not so fast, but um, it may take us a couple of days, even a couple of weeks to be exact. So that uh, my anticipation is that maybe within a matter of a week or two, will be clear about what the situation was like this morning at 9 o'clock. At 9 a.m. at this morning. Actually, their time. Our time was 9.30. All right. Their time is actually 30 minutes late. Yes, Pyongyang time. Exactly. Uh, second year professor of nuclear engineering at Seoul National University. Thank you so much for speaking with us tonight. We appreciate it. Pleasure.